President Obama started with a much weaker economy than I did. Listen to me now. No president, no president, not me, not any of my predecessors, no one could have fully repaired all the damage that he found in just four years. It is fair to say that everyone inside the Beltway and across America is talking about the book that details what many have whispered about in recent years, a rumored battle between the Clintons and the Obamas. The book is called Blood Feud, the Clintons versus the Obamas, a tome that is being hailed and assailed at the same time by the usual cadre of reviewers, but is also raising plenty of new questions about Mrs. Clinton and that possible run to the White House. Let's welcome in at midpoint the author of Blood Feud, former foreign editor of Newsweek, former editor-in-chief of the New York Times, Ed Klein joins us. It's always good to have an Ed to Ed. Welcome in, Ed. Thank you, Ed. This is interesting because, I mean, the book is getting an awful lot of publicity, and there's a lot of people who are rather shocked about the details of the feud. Give us an idea about when you were looking into the book and the things that you started to find about this feud existing and where it was going. Well, you know, the uh, mainstream media, as you well know, has spent a lot of time reporting about the so-called feud between the Tea Party and the establishment wings of the Republican Party but has spent little or no time at all about what I discovered to be the brutal feud between the two main uh, Democratic families, the Clintons and the Obamas. And I thought this was certainly worth a book-length treatment, and that's why I wrote Blood Feud. Okay, so, I, of course, you're never going to be able to tell us uh, who gave you a lot of these things, but Give us a, a detail, a little bit of this investigation and how you and, and how this apparently just uncovered layer by layer, because as I said, a lot of people were completely unaware that there was a feud going on in the first place. Well, everybody thought that the Clintons and the Obamas had buried the hatchet. Everybody kind of knew that there was some tension between them, to put it mildly, as a result of the 2008 primary battle between the Clintons and the Obamas. But uh, when Bill appeared and gave that fantastic speech at the Democratic National Convention, the conventional wisdom was, okay, they've made peace with each other. But in fact, that speech, as I discovered in researching Blood Feud, was part of a deal that the Clintons made, or Bill Clinton made, with Barack Obama during a golf game in September 2011 at Andrews Air Force Base. And the deal was very simple. Bill would campaign for Barack Obama if, in turn, Obama would promise to back Hillary in 2016. Bill made good on his promise, as we saw. He not only made that speech, but he campaigned vigorously for Obama. But after Obama won the election, he called Bill and told him that he had had second thoughts about backing Hillary, and he couldn't really promise anymore. He reneged on the deal, and Bill Clinton was devastated. Certainly this has to come down to the relationship between Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama while she was Secretary of State. Uh, there are some people who said she really didn't want to be in Washington. So I guess the question many people are asking is, did the president really let her run the State Department? Not at all. In fact, there's a chapter in my book, Blood Feud, in which Bill and Hillary Clinton visit Caroline Kennedy on Park Avenue in New York City where she has an apartment, right before she took up her post as ambassador to Tokyo. And Caroline naturally wanted to know from the former Secretary of State what to expect in terms of orders and com communications. And Hillary said, according to my sources who Hillary spoke to afterward, don't be surprised if most of your orders don't come from the State Department, but come from Valerie Jarrett in the White House. She ultimately runs things there. You've got to imagine that when that came through that Mrs. Clinton was not entirely thrilled with not being able to do her job. She was far from thrilled and, uh, you know, she kept her peace. Uh, I write about the fact that she could have at any time during those four years just thrown up her hands and said, I've had enough of this. I can't run the State Department and foreign policy the way I want to. I'm leaving. But she and Bill considered what that would mean if she had, in fact, stalked out. The Democratic Party would never have forgiven her. And one of the things she's wanted to do all along is keep on good terms with the Democrats 
in her run-up to 2016, so she'd have the party backing. Now, you're suggesting here that it, apparently the president of, doesn't have as much of a problem with Mrs. Clinton as maybe Michelle Obama and Valerie Jarrett, correct? I think there's a lot of truth to what you just said, Ed. I think that it's hard for me to say this without sounding misogynistic, sort of sexist, if you will. But in fact, all my reporting shows that Michelle Obama and Valerie Jarrett have monopolized the access to the president and the have kept away, kept people away who might have contending voices. I interviewed, for instance, um, Vernon Jordan, who, of course, is a great uh, figure in the Democratic Party. And I asked him, what is Valerie Jarrett's power? Where does it come from? Where does it stem from? And Jordan, whose wife, by the way, happens to be related to Valerie Jarrett, they are cousins, I believe, said on, a, on the record to me in an interview that appears in Blood Feud that her power ex comes from one simple fact, proximity. She's the person who is closest to the president, who decides who gets on Air Force One, who gets into the Oval Office, who sees the president when he goes on a trip. This is an enormous amount of power that this one woman who most people have never even heard of exercises over Barack Obama. Ask a simple question then. What's her problem? <laughs> what is Valerie <laughs> Jarrett's problem with Hillary Clinton? Well, I think that they felt that bringing Hillary into the State Department, I say they, I'm talking about Valerie and Michelle Obama, that in doing so, they were bringing basically the Clintons into the administration, both the Clintons. And the one thing they wanted to do was keep Bill Clinton and his influence as far away from Barack Obama as possible. You've raised some very serious health questions about Mrs. Clinton in the book itself. So let me just ask you flat out, do you think she's healthy enough to run for president? I'm not a doctor. I can't make a prognosis, but I would say this, that after she fainted in uh, 2012, in December of 2012, not the first time she fainted, by the way, she fainted in Buffalo in 2005. She fainted in Yemen in 2009. She's had frequent fainting spells. She was admitted to New York Presbyterian Hospital where her doctor told Bill Clinton, in the presence of some other people whom I interviewed, that his wife, Hillary, had a problem with her heart valve. It was not operating properly and that they had considered heart valve replacement surgery. They decided for now not to do it, but said that she needed to be closely observed for the rest of her life. Now, how serious this is, as I say, as a, not a doctor, I can't say, but I think that anyone who runs for president, as Hillary clearly is doing, trying to get the nomination and intending to run for president, needs to release her entire medical records because she's been saying up to now she's in perfect health and that simply is not true. A couple of minutes we have here now, and again, your opinion from what you've learned and all of your reporting. Do you think, and would you, would you be shocked, I guess, if the Obama White House did something to sabotage Mrs. Clinton's run, stop her from running for president? You know, that's a good question because I have a, a, a scene in uh, Bill Clinton's home in a place called Whitehaven in Washington, D.C., in Embassy Row where there's a big party that's being thrown by Chelsea Clinton. And there are a lot of people around, and they overhear Bill saying what I'm about to tell you, and I interviewed these people. Bill Clinton believes that Barack Obama is looking for what he calls a mini-me, a Obama-like figure in the Democratic Party who will come out of nowhere the way Obama did and challenge Hillary for the nomination. I have no idea if... This is just something that Bill Clinton has made up, or in fact, whether he has reason to believe this. But he truly believes that Obama does not want to see Hillary get the nomination. We have about 20 seconds left. What is the, what do you think the relationship is now between Barack Obama and Bill Clinton? I think it's poisonous. I think it's terrible. I think Bill Clinton goes around telling his friends that he can't stand Barack Obama. And Barack Obama, after having Bill Clinton to the White House, for one and only time for dinner, after the Clintons left, turned to his wife in the presence of Valerie Jarrett and said, 
That's why I don't have that guy over for dinner. You have people talking, I will tell you that, my good blood brother Ed. Uh, the movie is, uh, or the book is called Blood Feud, The Clintons versus the Obamas. I have a feeling that we will be talking about this book for a, a couple of years to come. I appreciate your time, Ed. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Ed. The book again is Blood Feud, The Clintons versus the Obamas. And it certainly is an interesting read as to what goes on at high rates of political theater, if you will. You can always tell us what you think on social media, and we will respond, of course, because that's what we do on the Newsmax TV network. And here on Midpoint, every day, we question everything.